Right. So from what I'm hearing you say is two ways to stand out in almost any industry that you're in is by essentially becoming a place that people come to experience as well as become the expert of that industry or an expert of content within, you know, like you said, the restaurants, what's going on in the city, the schools, just becoming an expert of the area. And, and that's specifically relating to real estate, but you could apply those in any business. So, so like in the sense, like if you were to charge, I heard this from uh, Jim Gilmore experience economy. If you were to charge admission just to go through the experience with you, Hey, it's 20, 50 bucks to actually work with me. What would you do every touch point if you were to charge admission? So even if you're take, if they got in your car to go look at houses, what happens in the car? What would be the best Uber or cab experience ever in that car ride? After you take them through the houses, what happens when you drop them off at their car? Or when they, do they get something sent to their mailbox or sent in their email that's fun afterwards? You know, if you were to charge admission for the process of working with it, hey, it's a cover charge to work with me. <laughs> it's 200 bucks, 500 bucks just to work. How much would you put into that experience to make it special? That's a question that, you know, we constantly ask with businesses. Right. So I think one of the first steps in that scenario for me or anyone is mm -hmm. to decipher what are your touch points mm -hmm. on average, yeah. how many of those that you'll have and then create a, an experience or something for someone to to remember you by yes. each one of those experiences. Yeah, and it's, and it's remembering you not by, not by you, but by the experience you provide. Like everyone sends gifts with their logo on it. So many realtors, here's a pen with my logo on. It's not about you, it's about them. The personalized touch, you as a realtor, get to know people more than 99% of businesses. You know what their preferences are, you know what's in their homes, you know what they like, you know what they're looking for. You have an opportunity to provide something that's so much closer to their heart than 99% of other business opportunities. Mm. People just come, we have 4,000 people come to our stadium every night. We don't get to know them like you get to know someone. They're home, what they're selling, what they want, what they're looking for, what their family, what their kids are like. There's so many things that we just look, we're selling a home. No, and you're not, or selling a house, you're building a home or you're part of their lifestyle, you're part of their memory that you can experience. So I think there's a very deep personal connection that you can provide without being creepy, just saying, hey, I saw this. I thought you'd, you'd like this. Or I thought out about this. This would be great for you. Uh, people always think of the gifts at the end. What about things on, on, on the process start? What if, what if they were, you can't do any gifts in Oklahoma? Is that what I'm hearing? Ish. Ish. You can do closing gifts, but you can't do things that to try to, you can't do gifts to draw attention or a crowd or to get business. I, that's, that's very, like, if, hey, I appreciate you working with me, I noticed that your kids might like, here's something you can't, it sounds like a very kind of weird gray line. It's a very gray line yeah. that you can't do, you can't do inducements. Like I can't give you something in order for you to do business with me. 100%. If that okay. makes sense. Like yeah. I can't give you a $50 gift card and then you come around and like, I'm trying to buy your business. I can't, mm -hmm. but that's essentially what they're frowning on is they don't want you to be able to buy someone's business yeah so i don't know, have you ever heard of uh, scott mccain and taxi terry the seven tenets of, of taxi terry uh, it sounds vaguely familiar so he's a great book and he met this taxi cab driver and the taxi cab driver picked him up in jacksonville and said are you ready for the best taxi ride of your life and scott mccain was like yeah i guess and he jumps in and they start talking and he actually had a recording device this is 20 years ago he still does it. he's got a big business now he's just a one cab driver and after any ride with someone, he would record, say, Scott McCain, he's got a daughter who's going to Vanderbilt, he's got a son that says this, he likes this, and he'd record into a CRM that he developed about this so that he knew the next time he potentially picked them up, hey, how's Julie doing in college? How's so-and-so? It wasn't even gifts, but it was this close connection that he developed. My question is, how many realtors do they know about the families, the things that they love, and actually have it in note form when they talk and say, hey, next time, hey, how's Julie doing? How's Susie doing? What's going on? That even personal relationship, there's no gifts there. It's just a different level of connection. My, my realtor that I've worked with for different homes, they never at first knew all that stuff. They never asked those questions. So what questions are you asking that shows that you really care, that you're different than just like, am I finding the right house? What about making sure it's, it's right for the family and getting to know the family and then thinking like, oh, it sounds like because he's playing soccer, this could be a great area for him to play soccer in the backyard. 
you know, this is a cool thing for them to play. And you get to know those things. And that's like, you're not a typical realtor. You're standing out because you care. You're standing out because of the relationship drive. Right People know this. Obviously, it's happened. But I learned that from Taxi Terry, a taxi cab guy who had a CRM data database of every person that he gave a ride. That's wild. 